I'm glad to be here and to just to ask your question how to communicate by talking. <laughs> talking and opening the eyes, probably. Um, since it's now my challenge to entertain you in the lunch break, um, I'll give you the conclusion first. And then I show you the material how to go to the how to come to the conclusion, and one uh, one of the conclusions is when we judge the projects and when we convince and when we talk and when we go into the dialogue, get rid of the images. Don't talk about how it looks like. If it is aesthetic, if it fits into the context by image, because the image is a kind of a standstill. The city is something moving. It is actually not the picture of the city, not the city image, it is a city movie. And we are playing main roles uh, in this kind of performance and we have to use the stage, the spaces in the cities, they are a stage for surprising living. Our life is full of surprises and of relations, of, of happenings and uh, that the stage is empty, that the space is empty it needs a shape and it is a kind of an underlying diagram that we understand as a community and that holds us together as a society and this I will show you very quickly. It is this urban dimension that is more and more the main issue in the Gestaltungsbeiräte. This is Innsbruck and the advisory council, the advisory board in Innsbruck was founded about now six years ago. So rather late, Salzburg has it now for 35 years. And so we could start right from the beginning and you see there are all the heads of the departments, there's the green space and the traffic and, uh, and business and the city planning and there are the young ones as well. As you have noticed, Innsbruck is very dense by topography, the mountains in the west is the airport. And we started to look at two, three, four projects in our first meeting, but our time was very preciously taken, like a kind of seminar in the urban history in getting to know the topography. And by every meeting, the density of projects looked at after a year, after two years, and finally after five years. After five years, something like seven or eight meetings a year, every time 10 projects, so that means more or less 500 projects in Innsbruck, and since I'm in Graz and Salzburg as well, I'm coming up to 1,200 or something like this. And the big circles you can see here, this is the interesting thing that the community or the city planning asked to look at complete quarters in an overall view on the broader context. And the range actually goes from very squirrel and absurd things like how to deal with a farmhouse underneath the highway, and how can you reject uh, the farmer's uh, wife, her desire for at least a bit of Tyrol underneath the highway bridge, or on the other side, uh, in, in the suburb, a project that follows the regulations, and in Tyrol, since mountains would not bother, and Tyrolians are used to mountains, so the slope, would cover the ground floor and it's not relevant for density. So you can do, I did a drawing again, something like this, and you have this three-story building, uh, but this kind of bullshit, you come into the house and you have the 20, 30 meter corridor in darkness because it's covered by the earth, and then you come to the uh, apartment with one window just on the opposite. So. What did the advisory council do? Asked for a small competition, quickly prepared, quickly done, and with a fantastic result. Not spectacular, not writing history of architecture, but something that fits in the context. The contrary, the big investor comes and wants a villa in the style of the American South, like 1848 with the, all these kind of images, what can you do? Yeah, you can go for a walk on the plot and more or less reduce and do the landscaping so that at least finally the scaleness uh, would fit. Overdoing settlements of the 1920s and 1940s and 50s, 
increasing the density within the city and permanently evaluating what's going on. Does it work and what is the next step in competition? Or taking the chance of overdoing, redoing the shopping centers around the railway station. These are chances when you get the real volumes, 20,000 square meter, you can correct what is missing. Now this very monofunctional, and what it would be in the future, hopefully, is a kind of hybrid building. So it comes quite harmlessly. It's a new facade and a new restaurant and something like this. And we say in the, in the board, no, it's not enough. Go on. Take the chance. Take that very precious site to uh, give something back to the city. Or the house of music we have probably seen, which just finished. How is it integrated in the surrounding? And we sent I'm always a member of the advisory board in the architectural competition, an international competition with 126 entries. I will be back to this uh, project again. A hybrid building appreciated a shopping center and a school on top of it. And the density needed in the city of Innsbruck by its topography leads to so far unasked questions and to so far unexpected solutions. To put a school, um, a college on top of a big shopping center is a hybrid situation as you find in other dense cities like, say, Tokyo or in, say, or well done architecture by Horst Parson. It should be added with one or two stories. And it's again, as if you look at this site where both examples have been, this is coming up. And half a year later, this is coming up. So the city changes. And it seems it is like clandestine. Because if you ask the people, they say, we want to keep the, our city as a constant. The, the public regards or considers the city as a kind of constant, permanently existing being. But actually, look at the city 50 years ago, half of it, 100 years ago, quarter of it. And so it goes on. Here in the armory, uh, we can see a housing competition, another one. And all this will change, and suddenly, the promenade is the most important thing nobody has asked for. It is not a project that was a submission to the advisory board, but the advisory board says, look, if all this changes, this promenade will be the most important thing, the public space that gives identity to the complete thing. And it goes on like this. You can find this example, and passing by, you, we discover details, and we just mention it care for it, look for it, look what you have here from the 1950s in the car maker or these uh, plasters. And you can see here a high rise next to the station. What is the most important? Once again, the connection. If you do something like this and it will come the next years at the station, you will have four of these columns around the stations. Crossing the station will be, that has to be cared for. And talking of railway, since there is now the big uh, construction of the tunnel, Germany, Austria, Italy, uh, underneath the Brenner Pass, uh, the railway line to the, uh, will get um, four tracks, and there will be an underpass. Then, when this trading area will be transformed into a housing area, maybe in about 20 or 30 years. But now we can influence that the underpass gets a shift, a friendly shift towards uh, the city. Or in a bigger context, the landscaping around the tunnel portal for the Brenner basic uh, tunnel. And the landscaping includes hiking paths, rescue bridge, rescue tunnel, and there are synergies. The rescue bridge and tunnel can be used for the hiking paths, for the access to this uh, famous um, sites and it will be a kind of green park and a kind of a chemical um, industry will be removed and the, and the river will be um, uh, more or less redone. And it was a special workshop initiated by the advisory board only for this project. Two, three, four sessions where all the planners from Italy, from Germany were coming and, and uh, okay, like playing with the toy train uh, also, the ropeways uh, on the famous Pachakofel mountain, where the Olympic downhill was, um, has taken place. 
So the ropeway was redone two years ago. This is the old one, and there are the new stations. So our contribution was that the competition was done at all. First, it was only, this is the tradition in Innsbruck uh, with the ropeways, so the landscaping is very important. First, it was uh, intended that there would be only a competition among the, the ropeway makers, but, uh, so it was architectural competition and looking at the whole, like here in uh, Amber's Castle, where the investor wants a 30, 40 housing next to the historical castle. So the, the scale of uh, intervention is actually the complete valley. Now, another uh, quarter, it's the big uh, circle, is here considered as one. That was not mine. And if you could Go back to my uh, presentation, I would show you some illustrations to the conclusion. That was the part of introducing Innsbruck. But what I wanted to say is, with this density of red points we have seen on the map, it's actually the issue what uh, we care for, we look, is the in-between the projects. And the in-between the, the projects is something that, uh, gives us that stage I was talking about at the beginning. And now I would like to have the diagram. Okay, I go quickly, quickly, forward. Tell again that the uh, same procedure as in Innsbruck, uh, you just give me again five more minutes. It's like in Salzburg, if you have a student house in this area, consider that all the other areas, they would develop something like 500 houses. And like Salzburg station, the city changes as well with all these points, with the housing competition, and, but the real thing to look at is the space, that yellow, and suddenly if you develop a project like that, which was suggested by the investor with this, after the competition, after intervention of the board, comes out like that. So that in between the red points is like the Nolli plan, the famous we have uh, from the 18th century in Rome. And this actually is not so far from the hybrid structures we find in cities like Tokyo, and like Google Map shows us, the city within the city within the city within a kind of a hybrid building that is Tokyo Station. And so in a workshop with Japanese students uh, two years ago, I did a Nolli plan of Tokyo. And exploring in the stations, the in-between, and on the left side, we see the main railroad, the Shinkansen, and actually right side, there is the most important public space underneath the railway bridge. And suddenly, the platforms actually, where we take our way from A to B, it's not the museum, it's not the office, it's not the church, it's not the uh, city, the town hall, but the, uh, the place of identification with the city are the ways in between the transit actually, and this is what we have to care for. It's exciting like Pyrenees' carcery, and the scale actually, you can be human in that hybrid cities, in that scaleness, in Osaka Station. You can find these structures, these underlying diagrams, with a radius of activity, where you find space like the reciproc of what we see above, the red is the body, the shape, actually, of the space in between what is built. And like here, just on one example, Steyr, the 40,000 people are looking into the place that gives, finally, the image in sense of picture, depiction, the historical with the, uh, images with uh, churches and towers and squares, but don't live in. And therefore, they talk of image and picture and what they want to keep. Well, the objects itself, you can take out the context and they will still speak about. They speak, there was once a context, like if you do an architectural model, 
on our working table, the context is, is uh, cancelled out. And suddenly, they get a kind of uh, gestalt, a being and an autonomous thing. Places of fortification, suddenly places of culture, of industry that give signs, like a piece of art, as Dujon did with, with this. You can play Mozart on that revolving platform on a Tokyo department store. You can find your place in the train looking out to the, to the snow. You can cover on an umbrella and you can create your world on the sidewalk. Well, it is the space, it is the stage, beyond the scale, and it's the in-between we have to care for in these advisory boards. Thank you. <laughs>